What's up, folks? I wanted to check in with y'all. I know I'm looking a little oily right now, but I'm well moisturized this morning. But I wanted to jump and check in with y'all. I didn't want y'all to think I was falling off or anything like that. Um, I just want to make sure when I come back, I get I come back with nothing but consistency. So I'm holding off on the full official comeback on of unorthodox logic with Mark. But let me just drop some jewels on y'all real quick. Let's do a quick rundown. Of what's going on? American descendants of slaves. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm 100% for it. I'm pushing it. I'm advocating for it. Um, uh, I've been advocating for it since its inception. I was part of the people who helped come up with it. Um, I didn't officially come up with the term myself, but um, the thought of it uh, is, is, is between a small group of people and myself. We all came up with it. You've seen Yvette Cornell um, and, uh, and, and, and Tone talked, coined the actual term, um, but it all stemmed from a conversation that we were all having um, in a private group that we we're all in, um, private chat that we we're all dealing with. Um, where we were discussing this whole situation of how we are going to approach elections. Because again, um, I know a lot of people sat out the elections. I opted to vote for a different party um, uh, in regards to the whole election process. So this time around, we're like, look, it's going to be as simple as this. Here's what we're offering. I mean, here's what we demand. If you're not willing to meet those demands, we're not interested in voting for you. And the reason why we have to be that way is because everyone else is that way. All we're doing is acting like everyone else. The problem is you have black people within our own society who are against what we're doing, saying, oh my God, we're just gonna get Trump again at this place. You guys are gonna just give us Trump again. How has your life as a black person worsened since Trump got in office? Tell me, how has your life as a black person worsened since Trump got in office? If anything, it should have gotten better. It should have opened your eyes because it should show you who's your people and who's not your people. Who's your friend and who's not your friend. Who's your ally, who's not your ally. Who's a coon, who's not a coon. Who's for us, who's not for us. All it did was create the line that you needed so you can understand what you're dealing with in this world. So to me, that's gotten better. I don't know about y'all, my life has gotten better. So. I'm not afraid of another four years of Trump because ain't nothing happened to me. Ain't nothing happened to our people. Look at this. Oh, no, listen, look at it with your emotions taken out of it. Take your emotions out of it, specifically for black people. What has this administration done to make your life harder? What have they done? They've done something to the LGBT community, which involves black people. They've done some immigration, which involves black people. Dreamers involve some black people. But specifically, something that specifically targeted black people, what have they done to harm us? Now, this administration pushed through the First, First Step Act. That act is to help get people out of jail. We know Obama was just outright pardoning people, outright, you know, uh, commemorating sentences and things of that nature. But we need actual... I don't even want to call, I don't like calling it prison reform because the whole system is broken. We need to throw the whole system away and we need to rebuild it. You know what I mean? We need prison rebuild, not prison reform because I'm not interested in forming a system that was built on racial uh, racial targeting. It was uh, built on racial bias. I'm not interested in reforming that system. that system. That system is terrible. You don't need to reform a system that's been based on, that was inherently built on hate. We need to absolutely destroy it and rebuild a new system. That's what we need to do. So I'm not interested in prison reform. Stop selling me that. When I say what you're going to do for black people, don't say prison reform. Get the fuck out my face with that. I'm not a criminal. Yes, I want to get people out of jail. Yes, I do. I want to get people that have been unjustly sentenced out of jail. I want people that's been in jail for not doing committing a crime out of jail. Yes, we shouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, cash bells where the richest people get out of jail faster than the poor people. How about we just do it based on uh, crime you're accused of? You feel what I'm saying? You're not confused. Uh, confu com if you're not accused of a crime of violence, then, you know, you shouldn't have a bell. It should be like, look, we're going to send this to you. Here's a ticket. Here's a warrant. And if you decide to run off on your warrant, then there's going to be more charges tacked onto that. And you're going to get punished for that. You decide to run off on your, uh, your your appearance ticket or whatever the case may be. Same thing happens with traffic tickets. You know what I mean? You get a ticket. You get a, a, a summons to court. You don't come to court. They hit you with the fines. And then they hit you with a, a warrant for your arrest. And you're going to come in and pay more fines and more and, and, and deal with that jail process. So if you want to do that, then you can go ahead and go through that process. That's a consequence of your actions. That's not a consequence of your predicament. You see what I'm saying? So... I don't, prison reform not enough for me. I need more than that. 
So American descendants of slaves, we are asking, we are demanding, excuse me, reparations in multiple forms. Me personally, I don't feel like it's just up to the federal government to pay us our money, pay us what we owe. I feel like it's the federal government, every single state that involved it, including all of those little uh, Confederate states, y'all all can pay us too. Every, the federal government, the states, every single business that um, bank and business that profited from us or industry period that profited from us owe us money. So for instance, there's the cotton industry, there's the tobacco industry, there's the banking industry, there's the federal government, those are state governments. That's just five different people that I can come off my fingers right off the top who owe us money. Then also there's a treaty where the Indians were supposed to, um, it's the Treaty of 1868, if I'm not mistaken, where uh, the Native Americans, we'll, we'll use proper terms for them, the Native Americans were supposed to uh, share some of that land that they got from the federal government with freedmen, black people, black free people. That didn't happen. J.P. Morgan Bank of America, two particular banks I know for sure, um, stole money from the Freedmen's Bank. They literally stole money from the Freedmen's Bank. They owe us money as well. And any other bank, Wells Fargo, y'all too. I'm pretty sure y'all was involved in that. We're going to figure that out. I'm going to make sure I speak on facts. So every single bank that got money from Freedmen's Bank, y'all owe us money. And every bank that profited from slave labor, y'all owe us money. Tobacco industry, y'all profited from slave labor, y'all owe us money. Cotton industry, y'all profited from slave labor, y'all owe us money. Sharecroppers, y'all profited off share, uh, of um, slave labor, y'all owe us money. So if you want to operate within these industries, you need to understand that it comes with a penalty tax because that industry gained its success, gained its riches of free slave labor. So all the people are saying, well, that's not possible. How can we give how can we give back reparations to these people? What's the number? Y'all found money to give to Japanese Americans who were put in internment camps for two measly years. And I don't want to belittle their situation, but I'm trying to compare it to our situation. So to compare it to our situation, it was two measly years. And they damn sure enough wasn't subjected to the conditions that we were subjected to. So I'm not buying that. Y'all got the money. Y'all gonna find the money. All these banks is giving these uh executives $30 million, $40 million uh salaries, and then on top of that, they get a nice little severance package if they get fired. Y'all I got the money and y'all gonna pay up so american descendants of slaves i'm all for it now surviving neverland fuck shit complete fuck shit you already know it's fuck shit yeah i've been new as fuck shit you're not about to try and play me i'm gonna dive into that in four shows i'm gonna dive into all of this stuff in four shows i just wanted to touch base with y'all let y'all know where i was at with it um the Mueller report i want the full report i would love to read it i would love to break it down on air with you guys so i want that Mueller report it says no invent no um no more um indictments are coming down which this is what i was trying to tell these people that you know support democrats i was like y'all are going to make it easy for him to get reelected because when that report come out because i knew this was gonna happen because this is what you gotta understand how it works right the last thing they want to do is indict a sitting president they do not want to indict a sitting president because I tell you this all the time. There is something called precedence. Precedence can alter the way a world works. And the reason why I say a world is because America pretty much runs the world. Despite what people may think we got the military to back it up. So let's just say the nation. If you set a precedent where you can indict a sitting president, every single fucking president will start getting indicted going forward. You don't want that. Because if this, say for instance, we never had Obama yet, right? Trump gets indicted as a sitting president. The next term Obama gets in, guess what's going to happen? They're going to find a way to get him indicted on something. It'll be the minor shit. They'll just start dragging presidents through the court process for absolutely anything and everything because they don't want that president sitting in office. It's all about who looks the worst. Is Democrats the most corrupt? Is Republicans the most corrupt? That's all it is to them. They don't give a fuck about us. That's why I understand why y'all sitting here pushing for that shit. You know what you do? You work on your local area. Y'all see what I'm doing. I'm going to be, I got my startup. I just, I just bought another LLC. I got my DBA with Marv Media Network. Got my LLC with M. Crittenden Enterprises. I'm going to be consulting. I'm going to do startup business consulting. So all y'all that need to get y'all business started up and all y'all that, that don't know what to do, what steps and what process to go through, come to me, pay a small fee. I help you get your LLC set up. I'll tell you how you get your page set up online. I'll show you tactics, marketing tools, all that stuff that you need to know. Come holler at me. So I'm going to close it out with this for now. Um, and I'm going to get back with y'all um, later on. I'm gonna just, I just want to drop some, some gems with y'all real quick. All right. Make sure you follow me on all social media at Marv Crittenden, M-A-R-V-C-R-I-T-T-E-N-D-E-N. -E -E and also make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Unorthodox Logic with Marv. Um, it's on all podcast platforms. All right. Peace.